when you first got the call to come and work with Mike, do you remember that day? Yes. So what happened? Who called you? And I mean, what, what was the what was the phone conversation? Michael Jackson's manager at the time, his name was Sandy Gallen. Mm. Sandy Gallen um, called my manager at the time, the guy who was representing me, and he said uh, to my manager, uh, can I speak to Teddy Riley? Because they actually called my cell phone, but I, I didn't recognize the number, so I always give the phone to my manager at the time, Harvey, and he said, he has this Wolfman Jack voice. He said, hello. I didn't speak to Teddy Riley. Who is this? Well, this is Michael Jackson's manager, Sandy Gallen. I don't believe you. <laughs> and my manager said to Sandy Gallen, well, I don't believe it's Michael Jackson. Put him on the phone. I just want to see if it's his voice. He just wanted to see if it was his voice. Yeah. And he, Michael gets on the phone. Hello? Hello. <laughs> and then he pulls, the, like a little kid, yeah. he pulls the phone from his mouth. He said, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was like, yeah. I said, uh, all right, finish talking to him then. He said, oh, God, I had him on hold. <laughs> Hello. He said, and he started laughing in the background. Yeah. Mike was laughing at my manager. Mm. He said, can I speak to Teddy? And she, he said, what is your name? He said, my name, Harvey. Oh, nice to meet you, Harvey. You're Teddy's manager. He said, yeah, I help him out. Yeah, <laughs> I help him out. Yeah, he's a good kid. He said, oh, yeah, I, I I read so much about him. I study him. And I want him to work on my album. I thought you guys were here in California. So I get on the phone with him, and his first thing he said, Teddy. It's like, Michael. He said, you're here. Wow. I said, no, we're not there. Where are we supposed to be? <laughs> He said, you're supposed to be here in the studio. Crazy. Aren't you You're going to be working on my album, aren't you? I said, I didn't know. You know, I didn't know I was supposed to be, you know, I'm just my first time even hearing about. He said, oh, you guys didn't tell him he's working on the album? It's like, no, this is our first call with him, Michael. Yeah, you're supposed to be coming here. Can you come here this Saturday? I said, no, um, I don't think I'll be able to come this Saturday because I wouldn't be prepared, you know. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, and this is, I'm going to set it right now. They got, they got the pads in their hand, and they're writing now everything that I want. You're going to come. What If you can't come this Saturday, can you come next Saturday? I was like, yes, I can come next Saturday, I promise. Mm -hmm. He said, you promise? <laughs> You're going to come? I was like, yep. I'm going to come. I'm going to make it. It give me enough time to prepare and have a bunch of music for you to listen to. He said, oh, great. He said, you, you going to be okay? I said, okay, yeah, I'm going to be great. He said, okay. I look forward to hearing the music and look forward to seeing you. And I can't wait. I said, I can't wait either. <laughs> he said, okay. I'll talk to you soon. And can I have your phone number? <laughs> I said, oh, all right, if I use your phone number... And it's okay if I call you before you come? And I said, it's perfectly fine. Mm. I said, okay, can I call you tomorrow? I said, you can call me anytime. So I went in the studio and they gave me the studio. And I said, this is for Michael Jackson. They was like, oh, wow. Okay, we're going to work it out. I'll let you know this afternoon if you can get four studios. But the fourth studio was Q-Tip Studio. Oh, wow. He had a small room like this. Mm -hmm. And it was smaller than this. It was like half the size. Mm -hmm. And I needed that room to bang out, take my little setup in that room, because I was in one room doing Jane Child, another room doing Why You Want to Dog Me Out, and another room doing Make You Sweat, Keith Sweat. And I needed that fourth room because I had all those other rooms locked out. So 
I said, I need that room. Can you talk to Q-Tip? He said, no, I'm going to set you up with a meeting because nobody wanted to tell or ask Q-Tip for his room. <laughs> it was he, he was working on vibing. Okay. Around the same time. Yeah. So I was like, yo, Q. I was like, um, it's all right. I'll call you Q or Tip. You know, like. <laughs> just making sure it's cool. I'm just making cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm trying to keep peace. Like, yeah. So he's like, man, just. Come on, man. I respect all your music, everything you're doing, man. In fact, I want to make a record with you. I want to work with you. And we just hit it off from there. And I said, man, I really, like, I need a room. And I got all three rooms locked out. I'm working on Michael Jackson. He's like, oh, I can do it in the daytime, you know, if you work at night. Or if you work in the daytime, I'll work at night. But I need the room to prepare to work with Michael Jackson. I, I can't go to him unprepared and I don't have a room, you know, to work with him, you know. He said, you can have my room, man. Gave you the room. He gave me the room. So I got another setup. I bought it. I did everything on spec. I had Sam Ash give me equipment. I didn't even have the money to pay for it. And all I can remember is I'm in that room and it's me. And I said, man, I need somebody to just... And to hang out with me, man. Come on, man. And then Sally Richardson gives me a call. And she was like, you in the studio? I said, yeah. She said, I'm in New York. I said, ah, oh, come to the studio. She said, all right, I'm going to be here for a week. Could I hang out with you? You know, is it all right? I'm not going to be in your way. I said, you ain't going to be in my way at all. <laughs> You're going to be inspiration. 100%. And she came, she hung out with me, and that was my friend, you know. So th did she inspire any of the dangerous tracks that you produced? What? Do so, you remember the time that, that was for Sally we Richardson. fell in love? That was for Sally Richardson. I can't let her get away. <laughs> that, those were all She drives me wild. <laughs> you see how I'm cutting you okay, off? Okay, those are all inspired. That was inspiration. Oh, wow. Great inspiration. I had all the hooks. I had remember the time hook ready. For in the media, we hear about Mike. We hear loads of different things about Mike, but you actually experienced Mike in its I fullest. Stayed you with stayed Mike. with Mike. We ate Popeyes and Kentucky Fried Chicken is, together. Is Mike that strange character that he was painted to be? No. So what like if there's one thing you'd want somebody to know about Michael Jackson that we don't know? What would it be? Homie in the house. Would you? What do you mean by that? He's like a homie in the house. Really? Like, like he's down. He's, he's not like, like a homie yeah. in the house. Okay. Seriously, homie in the house. The one thing I never did with Michael, with Michael, was take a bunch of pictures. I always, I never invaded his privacy. I never did anything to make him nervous of me or skeptical, you know, or. Like, I can't be in a room with yeah. him. Yeah. Michael will always call me in his hot-ass room because he loves heat. Okay. He don't like the sun he just because likes of his, warm. his skin. Yeah. But he loves his room okay. so warm. Like, you couldn't breathe. Like, you just breathing hot air. And he has the heater on the other side and then a heater in front of him and then a humidifier. Wow. With, you know, blowing the... Because he loves steam. Mm -hmm. It moistens his voice. So I'm sitting in this room, I'm like... <laughs> taking the jacket off. Taking jackets yeah. off, like... Hot. Really? So, but... To give you the best description of Michael is warm. Warm-hearted dude. And when you're behind closed doors with him, he talks about things that you would never expect him to talk about. Mm -hmm. About his youth life, his his life, you know, with the little friends that he had. Mm -hmm. And how we all that came into his life, like Renee, Bruce Sudin, we all became his friends to the point where <clears throat> all of us had our own nicknames for him. What was yours? And mine, mm. I I gave him the name that Gene Griffin gave me, Midas. Okay. The king. And But when we talk serious, I always say Michael because it was just respect. 
you know, Michael means a reflection of God, you know, and I I was always that one, you know, to call people by their their name that God give them. Coming off the back of bad and doing dangerous, were you not worried at all that you weren't going to be able to because that's, I mean, Let me tell you something. Like, were you not, were you not, were you not nervous what? at all? Tell me what, what was you, was the feeling like? Were I you was confident? nervous. Really? I was in his room of accomplishments, looking at his platinums, and then I turned around. And I seen a chess set. It was platinum and gold, <laughs> and I did not know because I thought I came in the one door, which is the only way in and the only way right. out. But didn't know that he had a secret door from the fireplace that was a fake fireplace. Wow! It was a door. He came in that door. And it's so quiet. I thought, you know, when you hear doors, you hear mm. no, no sound. So he came behind me and put his hand on my shoulder and I fell to my feet. He started busting out laughing at me. And that was the beginning of, you know, yeah. extravagant, uh, amusing, extremely amusing time with him. When you guys had finished recording, he did went, you know what the album was going to do, what it did? Do no. you know, you, did, you had no Mm-mm. idea. Michael actually put me in check, but it was like a good check. Mm-hmm. I want to show you something. So he showed me this board and he keeps a lot of boards and he does his art on his table mm-hmm. and he showed me this board and he said, and it was like 60 songs. He said, Remember the time Joy can't let her get away. She drives me wild. Black and white. Um Jam and uh Heal the World. Um Will You Be There? He said, Do you see those ones are written in in red? These are in green. No. These are in yellow or something. It was just different colors. Mm. But the ones that were in red were the for sure records. And the majority of those were your records. Crazy. 